All right, Ian. Yeah. Uh, we were at, uh, we had a great time at the SoCal Gaming Expo this past weekend. We did. It was a wonder, wondrous time. It was good. It was good to be next to Ian rubbing elbows with, with the folks out there. Rubbing elbows, getting down in, into the, the nitty gritty. Ian's selling his cute little little popsicle, little uh, phone, what are they called? Phone charms? Little phone charms. Little girl, little like four-year-old girl it's got It's always one. a four-year-old girl who loves my phone charms. They're adorable. <laughs> They're little popsicles. I don't, I don't even know how to attach it to my because, phone Well, that's still. the problem. You can't attach charms to anything anymore. Oh, so like, can you so attach like, it to a phone? How do you attach I them? finally got these cute little phone charms made, and like I can't fucking put them on anything. How did you used to attach them? There was like a there little was like, There was on the corner of old phones, there was always like a little, was like a little bar with like an in, like, Okay. Basically, you a little can, hole. You could, like loop it in. Yeah, a little hole and then a hole, and you could loop the charm in and they, hang it. They off. ruined the charm industry. They did. Android and Apple. And it's just I, because you know I, I, maybe there's an Android that lets you put charms on there, but I know Apple has got you know they're like mm, bruh, bruh. you can't do that's the noise they make when they're like bruh, you can't. Oh, anyway, so Ian was selling that. We we were yeah. we were slinging books and shirts and enamel pins and and, and um. Ian had a chance to shop. It was Ian's first convention in two and a half years, so. Pre-pandemic versus post, I, I loved it to hear Ian's reaction to not just what he saw, but the prices of things walking around and, and how he how it sort of jolted his system, perhaps. So obviously, I, I still worked at Luna well into the the pandemic. Two locations, uh, two locations, San Diego, great folks, um, and so I saw a lot of the price flux. I mean, I, I I saw what COVID did to the video game market, and I saw what COVID did to pricing. However, you know. Luna has a pretty good stock. Nothing is going to give you a complete picture outside of like just pouring over price charting, I guess. Sure. Nothing is going to give you a complete picture like going to a convention and walking around, um, you know, a show floor that is just jam packed full of people selling games for every system. Yes. So, for instance, while I knew Saturn prices were crazy, um, you know, people are holding on to that stuff. So, Luna, I maybe only saw a few games come in every couple of months months here i could walk to any number of booths and see boxes of saturn games and see what they were suddenly going for you sure. got a much more complete and thorough picture of um of the pricing so yeah i mean <laughs> what, what do i say yeah. retro game pricing is is whew, wow even more than what you expected yeah um so you know it was funny to see because I, I did walk. There was a couple of instances where that wasn't necessarily the case, but I'll, I'll get back to that. Um, Saturn stuff. Numero uno. Vani's favorite. Definitely we're going to be looking at some Saturn stuff. Man, there are just like... I. The amount of games that are under $100 for that system now? There's like none. There's like it's, not, it's, it's down to like Madden 98. <laughs> like based on Madden 96. Or like something really, really common like like uh, uh, like Fighting Vipers. You know, you, uh, like a, a, a fighting game that's fun. It's a non-sports game. But like they really did just produce the ever-loving shit out of that one. Well, that's still so, not cheap. No, it's not cheap. It's like 50 bucks. <laughs> so... Um, Vani and I are looking at the, the 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 Saturn games, and she goes because she loves to buy like on the Saturn specifically, and I don't know why. She loves to buy the like licensed games, like the shitty movie games and stuff like that. She has like the Jurassic Park Lost World game. Uh, the game that her and I always talk about is the Congo game that was exclusive for the Sega Saturn. Oh, that's right. You told me about we that. We love to play the that. Weird like, Congo game. Though. Yeah, and it's awful. Multi genre game. No, no, it's 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 a first person oh, it's shooter. Not the genre. No, okay. it's a first person that's, shooter. Okay. Um, but it's awful. Uh, so she was looking at a copy of Casper. There's a Casper the Friendly Ghost game. She goes, oh. She was just for Saturn, yeah, and she, based on the movie. And it was just the other day she's been like going through her uh -huh. her comics and re like um, re inventorying them, and she had just gotten to like her Casper section. She's like, I like Casper, so like it was just <laughs> one of those things where like sure. it was on her mind, and she saw it. She was like, I think this is going to be the one that one hundred and twenty dollars. Okay, a <laughs> like, hundred and twenty for a Casper for movie game. game. Wow, and like. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I didn't really like do the eBay let look. You know, I let if Vani's shopping, I let her do her pricing. I don't know if that's like out of the the norm. If that's insane, but if it's one hundred and twenty dollars, even if someone's overpricing it by fifty, that means it should be at seventy. Like, yeah, 
Like you're, you're always going to expect some sort of premium on here. But like when you hear that, provided they're uh, not just like completely taking the piss, right? Even if they yeah, overcharged uh, by a shitload, it would still be 70. Our, our pal Yoshi tweeted out on uh, yesterday, not sure I can afford this hobby anymore. LOL with a picture of complete in box games. Um, Someone's trying to uh, get like 112 in that picture for a Dragon Warrior or something. Uh, uh, for Super Nintendo. There's two hundred dollars for Super Mario Bros. Three complete in box. Two hundred dollars. That used to be thirty dollars. Uh, honestly, I, I, thirty to forty for a complete in box Super Mario. That used to be thirty dollars a few years ago. Star Fox complete in box. Ian, that was probably what twenty five, thirty bucks a few years back. Maybe forty. One hundred and fifty dollars. Um, Sunset Riders. Sunset Riders, Ian. Is that four hundred dollars? <laughs> is that? Is that is it, I see a four. Is that four hundred? Four. Oh, I'm sorry, Ian. I was wrong. Four fifty for Sunset Riders. Um, Des even Desert Strike. Common ass fifty dollars complete in box for Desert Strike. And I'm not. I'm not going after the, the vendors. They got to make their money. But we're just telling no, you I, how I, much I, different this is from even 2019. Like two. Like a little over. Two, well, I say two years ago. Two years ago, before the pandemic, these prices would be more than half. Or it should be less well, than half. I of mean, these and I do think some, of, some of that is convention convention tax because I am looking you can get a Star Fox complete box buy it now right now for ninety dollars. That's still nuts to me. Though, it is because that's one of the most common super it Nintendo is. games. But uh, I, I I I do want to make it clear that I'm not there are certain vendors that I could always there's always a couple sure. of vendors where you're sure. like, okay, this is beyond the Beyond, beyond the, the pale, pale. Yeah. yeah but not uh, yeah. most of the vendors i i get it like especially right now you are in a really weird market and you got to try to get what you can for it because it's not coming yeah. to you cheaply either the the problem is it's it's a i mean you want to say an, a, a fresh new bubble um i think it definitely is um uh, and I, I i sold i sold uh, a decent amount of stuff i sold like i had a famicom uh, set complete, uh, not in the box with like six games. I think I, I sold it for 90. I got there. It's probably worth about 130, 140. But I was marking things about 70%, 60% just to move them. Like 70% just to move them. And I sold almost all of my box stuff. And I was like, well, I usually sell a lot of it. It wasn't like dirt cheap, but like, for example, let me give you one example. And I'll tell you why I sold the stuff. It was a result of other stuff being priced to the moon around me. Yes, no, that's that, why. That's, I, so I, I took uh, me, some v slightly more expensive Vita games and some doubles I had of Game Boy games, and other than like two really expensive games, and I actually sold one game that was in between the price of those two, so it wasn't just like people had a cap. I sold everything within about three hours. The guy who was down the hall, I, I think his name was Brandon, and his his uh, his partner was. Daphne or Denise, I wish I could remember. Uh -huh. They were really nice, but they were the ones selling the um, the PC Engine Turbo stuff. I want to make it, he. I walked up there. I'm like, man, you got some good prices on these. And he's like, well, I do have everything priced to move. He's like, I really don't want to be here forever. Sure. He had multiple, multiple games for the PC Engine and Turbo Graphics that were in the 100, 150, 200 dollar category. They still sold. He didn't even come back the second day. He sold so much of his shit uh the first day. So I think almost everything. So I had I I feel bad selling some of this stuff, but I can oh this is how I'm getting over it. Okay, this is what I this is what I sold some of it. Um because I took a picture of it. I should have sent it to you. Uh I I, I can I can text you a bit real quick so, so you can see like what was on my shelf here. I'll text it to you right now. For example, the Killer Instinct uh Super Nintendo set. Complete, had the killer cut CD. I think I put 175 on it because online uh it was going for two hundred uh, about from the soul ones, not a lot. Uh, I sold it. I sold it by I think right after right after we got out of our panel, like one on Saturday. I sold that set. Didn't even get a counter. I walked two rows down. Someone had uh, five hundred on that. Right on that set, and and the box was in worse shape than mine. And I sold it for one set. So the mentality of seeing, wow, look at these prices. I'm getting a good deal. To them, be, online they might be able to get it for the same amount. They're saving on shipping, but for someone to price something that I had more than double what I had when I was like, okay, this is reasonable. It just was mind-boggling to me. Let me, let me, uh, let me send you this so you can see. I just sent that to you. Um, I sold the Sega Genesis Model Three in the box for seventy-five. Um, 
I think it goes for a little bit more but that much but then I sold my two uh, I sold my action set I had this is how you know past starting the sale of 2022 you know the action set I sold that action set Ian complete I think I sold it for like 175 or 200 somewhere in that range I can't see um, that set was like four hundred dollars elsewhere just a plain old action set oh yeah one of the most probably the most com one of the most common NES sets I sold the control deck set I believe it was like 130 in the box the control tech set and i didn't price that one but i can imagine that being like two to 250 elsewhere on the convention floor um i sold the um atomic purple n64 console set there was no atomic purple a controller inside i told them that i sold it for like 200 dollars. i believe i saw that for 350 elsewhere so i was pricing stuff you want to say i was i was i was, I was dumb but I, I wanted to get rid of obviously and not most of it was cash but like i think we're going to get to a point again where people are going to be quickly priced out again Oh sure. I think if if I'm selling this stuff that I think is reasonable, uh, 175. Someone's trying to get four to five hundred for the same sort of console. I think at some point you're going you're going to have to see the bubble sort of compress. Well, in a, in a, in a, have to in a mass market, <clears throat> you can you can do high price collectibles and things, but it's going to be a small group. Um, yeah, at some point, and I, like I said, I understand vendors selling, but at some point in this crazy climb, the, the COVID bubble, someone's going to be left holding the bag. Yes. You're either going to have a collection that is not worth nearly as much as you paid for it, or you're never going to be able to get rid of the shit at the price that you want to. One of those two people, one of those two things is going to happen from a collector or a, a shop standpoint. And um, yeah, I mean, at some point people will just say no. Yeah. No. I can't. And then some might. Like, absolutely not. I, I can't. I just priced games I had in the garage. Like I had like a Kid Icarus on Game Boy. Um, I, I think I sold it for 20 bucks. I think it's worth like 30 to 35. And actually one of the score chasers guys, the guy that won Dr. Mar, he bought that. The stuff, most of my stuff moved by Saturday. Ian's too. But like most of my stuff was gone. I had the whole side table. It was almost nothing you saw by Sunday afternoon. Yeah, I had nothing. I even sold, I even sold my sealed DS. I had a sealed like uh, uh, Showtime boxing. I sold for $3. And like, uh, was it silly bands? It sold for five bucks. People were just buying stuff they thought was reasonable. I sold all. You sold all your friends' Atari stuff just about. I sold all the Atari computer games. I just they're in a garage in a box. I sold all of them. Oh yeah, my friend um, had a, a box of Atari stuff that I got sent up with, um, and that all moved. One dude like, and it was interesting Atari stuff. It was definitely less common stuff. There was some double enders and some of the weird third party games, and uh, one guy just went nuts for it. Um, yeah, I went up with like 20 games and a stack of 12 or maybe 15 of the Yokoi Kids annual mm -hmm. and came back with two games and three copies left of the Yokoi Kids annual. So like everything was just people were interested in anything that people had. Do you regret anything you sold? Or you're, you're okay selling stuff. Like, uh, I, I regret selling that, that I sold the Atari uh, video pinball for like 50 bucks in the box. I already regret that because that's so kitschy and cool that I, at some point I might get that again. Uh, one of the games that I was kind of on the fence about selling was Strider 2, which was also the most expensive game I took. I didn't know weekend. that was a thing. Um, and the great thing about Strider that 2... Was PlayStation? And the great thing about it is, is it comes with Strider 1. Uh, it comes with an arcade perfect port of Strider 1. So um, it's a great double package, and Strider 2 has never been re-released anywhere, to my knowledge. So that one I kind of didn't want to get rid of. And so I wasn't super sad to come back with it. Most importantly, I sold the uh, DDP uh, electronic game where it's literally GDP's body and you're holding it by the crotch where the buttons are. Mm, yeah. 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 Let me send you that picture. I even sold stuff like it was only 10 bucks, like the uncommon uh, EA PlayStation gamepad, the blue one. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't see it too often. I sold it to, to a young kid by like 13, 14 people with his mom. I sold it for like 10 bucks on Sunday. It's like people were buying, people were buying things, Ian. That I had brought out before to SoCal Gaming Expo years past that no one ever touched. That was weird to me. It was like they didn't touch this three years ago or four years ago. Well, now sure, and, yeah. it, and it makes me think. You know, I, I do think there was a really good selection of stuff presented there this time. Like just very, very There's like. Yeah. yeah, I know it. Um, a very broad selection, but I also think it was just for a lot of people. This is their first convention back, and I yeah. wonder if even for me, a lot of like me. You know, am I over pumping it or was I just happy to be able to walk around tables and see stuff? Sure. And maybe you bought more than you would, and I would did. have. Yeah. I, I've Q Billion, one of the Game Boy games that I bought, mm -hmm. uh, I 
it's some weird puzzle game. It has an interesting sticker, like the font's interesting, and it's got mice on it. Uh-huh. And every single time it's coming to Luna, I've looked it up and gone, this doesn't look like any fun, and I've never bought it. And I bought it at SoCal Gaming Convention because I was like, you know what? It's the right price. And uh, I guess this is the time I'm going to try it. So, yes, I did. I did buy more than I would have, yeah. I think, um, if I was going to these all the time. Like I said, the end of 2019, which was a pretty solid run of conventions for me over two years, I, I picked up literally one thing in Long Island and maybe two things in Portland. I sold. And I probably bought six or seven things at this convention. With the exception of one of the sealed DS games and I think Hardball 95 from Genesis, no one even asked about it. I sold all of the individual retro games I had. I, I brought. Did you uh, end up selling the the leftover PC Engine? Yeah. They all went. Oh, they did. Okay. Oh, yeah. I sold the Mahjong. I sold. Well, I, um, they were. I saw. I thought I was seeing sports games until the end of the Sunday. Uh, J League winning shot. The golf game. Um, the Fire Pro. I sold again. Those are ones I remember bringing out. No one touched them. Uh, there. They're not heavy hitters. Like I got between like five and ten for most of them. But even um, I, I brought two Super Nintendo games, Super Mario Two and Equinox. They sold like immediately uh, to the same person who got my Harvest Moon, which I priced probably half of what the other people were selling it for. And uh, things were just moving. Things were just moving the whole weekend. And even uh, I had some beat up NES games that were sun faded from the uh, from the uh, swap meet that I picked up here and there for like a buck. There was like a, there was like a, a, a duck hunt with like almost the entire label gone. I was thought it was literally like the middle of the label, and that's it. Sold it for like two bucks. You know. Oh like yeah, that. I remember that one. So like that all almost all that stuff gone was gone. So just people just want to buy stuff. Yep. So it's a combination of people want to buy stuff. I think we had good. Obviously, we always priced our stuff pretty good. Uh, I don't think resellers bought our stuff this time. I, th- I think that, that was unlike the other ones that passed the PRG, we weren't like cleaned out early. On or, or at least on Friday night, I didn't see that happening. You no, know, I didn't think that was I, happening. Or, or and or also, I knew most of the at this point, I knew most of the resellers there by by face. At least by face, so you know that they, they weren't going to do that right uh, there. But um, yeah, I even t- uh, sold uh, to our, our new pal uh, Chris the Atari XC I had in the box. Had that forever from Jersey. Good old Chris. I love seeing Chris. He's called him Little Chris. It's not little. I said good old Chris. I said Ludicrous or Little Chris. No, good old Chris. He is not a little man. He is very tall. Ju- I'll call him Judo Chris. Judo Chris. Judo expert. That's, yeah. That's his, you think he's got like a switch on his back? He can flip to make him grip. He's got the, the grip. The oh, thing. that's Kung, Kung Fu, Fu grip. Kung Fu grip. Kung Fu grip. Kung Fu grip. Sorry. <laughs> Close. That was that was the GI Joe adventure. Well, I know. Team. Yeah, but I'm, I'm was, just I'm, I'm saying he could hands. he could he could introduce. Oh, he probably, he's got judo a firm grip. grip. Probably absolutely can do that. All right. Well. The next one uh, I'm going to be at, I believe, I, I shouldn't say until I'm officially, officially, officially booked, but it's going to be at probably end of April, I think. I'm interested to see it now, how it is different parts of the country this year in terms of, of the buying patterns mm-hmm. and prices. That's always interesting to see that. But, uh, you know, I think uh, I think for at least this year, until we're like knocking on wood out of the pandemic, which hopefully happens by the end of the year, but I'm going to keep knocking on wood, uh, I, I think... We'll see the prices stay here, but I think they're going to dip after that point. They're going to have to. I can't see the prices staying this high and stuff. I just can't. 